In this video, we're going to solve equations with fractions. Okay, so as you can see, in problem number one, I got to solve for x like you've done before. Only this this time, I got fractions. Okay, so there's a couple ways to approach this. We could do think about what we did before. If we had like 5x equals 25, we would divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of x. So you could do that here. You could divide both sides by negative 4 sevenths, okay? But I'm going to show you an approach that maybe we can just do for every problem. And that's going to be multiply both sides by the least common denominator. Okay, so every problem I see with fractions, I'm going to get rid of the fractions by multiplying everything by the LCD. So the least common denominator in this case would be the smallest number that 7 and 9 go into. In this case, it happens to be the product of the two. It's not always the product of the two, but in this case, it is. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 63. All right, and let me rewrite that. So it's 63 times negative 4 sevenths. That's my x term. So I wrote it like that just so I can kind of see how to multiply the fractions. And then over here it's 2 ninths times 63 and I like to put the 63 over 1 and it helps me it helps me remember how to deal with multiplying a fraction like 2 ninths times a, uh, an integer like 63. Okay, so kind of make that integer a fraction and I take 9 into 63 it goes in 7 times. I take 7 into 63 it goes in 9 times. Okay, and now I'm multiplying what's on top, the 9 and the negative 4. Over here, the 2 and the 7, because it's just all 1's in the bottom. And you, when you divide by 1, it doesn't change anything. So now I'm looking at negative 36x equals 14. Okay, so now in that one step, we've gotten rid of our fractions, which is the goal. So do that first. You won't have to deal with fractions. And then we can recall our methods for solving. In this case, it's just that last step. Divide by the coefficient of x, which is negative 36. So I divide by negative 36. I don't switch the signs in that step. And I get my answer, 14 over negative 36, which will reduce to 7 over 18. And it's still negative. That is my solution for x. Okay. So let's look at one that takes maybe a couple more steps. Uh, 3 fifths plus x equals 2 thirds x. Now again, I'm going to do the same approach every time. Multiply both sides by the coefficient, I'm sorry, both sides by the LCD. So in this case again, the LCD is the smallest number that 5 and 3 go into, which is 15. So multiply everything by 15. I just have to be careful now that I'm multiplying everything by 15 because that's what, by following the rules of algebra, that won't change my solution to x. Okay, so be careful. Don't just multiply your fractions by the LCD. Multiply everything by the LCD, including that x term right here. That, that's not a fraction, right? But you still got to multiply it by the LCD. All right, so 15 times 3 fifths plus 15 times x equals 15 times 2 thirds x. Okay, 1 and 3, so that gives me 9 plus 15x equals 1, 5, 5 times 2, 10x. All right, and that's the key step for this problem. Multiply by LCD, and you don't have to worry about fractions anymore. All right, now you remember your methods for solving. I'm going to subtract 15x since it's just x on the right side by itself. And that gives me 9 equals negative 5x. And the last step is to divide by negative 5. All right, which gives me a solution of negative 9 fifths. Sometimes I get the question, if it's a negative fraction, what do you do with the negative sign? Does it go with a 9? Does it go with a 5? Uh, or does it go right up front? Usually, like in a textbook, you would see it right in front of the, of the fraction or the fraction bar. But it doesn't matter. As long as you have one negative sign, that would also be acceptable. 
long as you have one negative sign indicating that it's a negative number. All right, moving along, number three. Okay, good. So this is our first example where I can't get the LCD by just multiplying like three times two, right, which we did in the first two cases. Uh, and this is the first example where I have, where I have three fractions. So I've got to find the LCD, the smallest number that three, two, and four go into. If you have trouble with the LCD, always start with your biggest number and just start listing its multiples, all right, and then ask yourself, We'll start with 4. 2 goes into 4, but 3 doesn't, so that doesn't work. And then go to 8. 2 goes into 8, but 3 doesn't. And then go to 12, right? These are your multiples of 4. And then you realize that all three numbers go into 12, and you found your LCD. Okay? So LCD is 12. And now I'm going to multiply everything by the LCD. Okay, so 12 times this side. 12 times this side. Remember, you're going to have to multiply the 12 by the 3, even though the 3 is not a fraction. All right, so let's do this. 12 times 4 thirds x minus 12 times 1 half equals 12 times 1 fourth x plus 12 times 3. Okay, and now we simplify. Divide the 1 into the 12 goes 4 times gives me 16x minus 6 3x plus 36 okay so that looked messy the problem didn't look nice to start with because of the fractions but with the one step of multiplying by LCD I got a pretty simple equation to solve 16x equals 3x plus 42, come up here to finish it, 16x equals 3x plus 42, I'm going to subtract the 3x, and now I got 13x equals 42, I'm going to divide, my last step will be to divide both sides by 13, And then I have what I think is my answer. Try and reduce it. Always think about reducing a fraction if you can. I don't think that's going to reduce. Nothing goes into 13 but 13 in itself. And 13 does not go into 42. Um, the other thing we haven't talked about in this video is checking your solution. You can always check your solution, right? It's just going to be kind of complicated. You put a 42 over 13 here, here, and here and it's going to be a little messy, maybe more work than the actual problem, but keep in mind you can always do that or use a calculator to check it as well. 